So right now I am at Edwards Hospital in Naperville and you are staring at, this is the heart area of the hospital. I have taken my father because he's, uh, you know, a heart patient over here. Beautiful hospital. Architecture is just un unreal. I'm not too sure how old this building is, but it is newer than these other buildings over here. Landscaping here is really, really nice. They really want you to feel comfortable. They got pathways uh, around the building, kind of like what you're seeing here. This area over here used to be a concrete lattice and they ended up uh, just letting it grow, I guess. I don't know. Kind of looks like shit, but once the landscaping starts, you know, getting a little bit more fuller over here, it's really nice. They got a lot of flowers and different stuff over here. Right now, you're hearing a lot of traffic going by. It's a gated hospital. One nice thing about this is they have a real nice water feature over here. And let's go over there right now. No climbing. So this is the water feature that I was talking about. It's pretty nice. It's kind of like a little stream that goes through here. And as you can see, it does have koi. These guys are hungry little fuckers. They will actually suck on your finger. How do I know? Well, I let one do it one time. So this is part of it with the waterfall. Nice little statue over there. I could probably zoom in on this statue. Then they come around on this side, this small bridge. Hello. He's got buddies. Yeah, half their head is out of the water. There's another little area over here, more of a pond. They're following me. They're hungry, I tell you. And there's another bridge over here. They can go through. Now it's going to be one big happy family. That must be an emergency over here. Sorry about that. And this is the waterfall. This is Edwards Hospital in Naperville. When it starts growing in, it looks really, really nice. statue I was talking about. This is kind of where the water feature begins and then ends over here. More clay? Probably the same ones. This is where it ends at. Are you guys following me? Yep, there comes his buddies. I tell you, they're hungry. Gotta feed these guys. Well, I gotta go back inside, check things out, make sure the old man is uh, not sitting there by himself and he's left him in the room because he's supposed to be getting a procedure done. Yep. I like that white one with the orange spots on it. That's pretty cool. 
think they're all following me over here because they think I got food or something. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. You're watching the Art Noise. I'm doing just great. And yes, we are back with the Epiphone Special 2 Custom uh, Spider, whatever you want to call it, uh, Les Paul that I've been working on for the past, I want to say, month now. And it's coming along pretty damn nice. The headstock, uh, I got to thank Jeff Lee. That logo on the headstock is phenomenal. Is that how you say it? It worked out really good underneath the clear coat and what I'm using is epoxy resin on top of there. Just came out really, really nice. Now the back of the headstock, I'm gonna take my logo off of here. I stuck it over the um, serial number, which I shouldn't have. Um, but I'm gonna take that off of here, touch up the rest of these. These little holes that were over here are all filled and you don't even feel them. They're nice and flat. So what I'm gonna end up doing with the neck is instead of doing the back and neck in a gloss finish, I'm going to use the Spray Max, and this is a 2K clear matte finish. I'm going to use that on the back of the neck instead of using the 2K Glamour, clear glamour that I've been using on everything else for a high gloss finish. The 2K Max Spray is a great fucking paint, I gotta say. You, it's a mix. You have to end up popping the bottom on these things and mix the second part into the first part. It's already measured for you. For the hardener, you don't have to do shit. Just pop it, shake it, and start spraying with it. Make sure you shake it up the recommended times that it says to shake it on the can. Otherwise, you can end up with some issues or problems for having the paint under mixed. Now, what's going on over here is I already shot this yesterday, and I started sanding on this this morning. Um, the sides are like the sides are beautiful all right i can't complain at all about the sides the back of it because i had this laying like this when i was spraying it and it was raised above the table uh i wrapped one of the tables that we have uh, in the backyard in plastic set this on top of a a box and ended up doing the spray uh going around to the front of it a little bit i can easily just sand that down and polish that out not a big deal but what happened here was well, one of the problems was spraying outside on a little bit of a windy day. Got dirt, dust, particles in the paint. So I have to sand that out and then make sure that uh, everything is nice and flat and smooth and then hit it again with some more clear. I gotta be careful around the artwork. I've already sanded quite a bit of it down and got rid of a lot of the, the dust that was in there. I gotta say, there was a lot of dust in this thing. What I ended up doing is I sprayed it a few times outside uh, let it sit outside in between spraying and then ended up uh, hitting it for the last time Let it sit outside to kind of cure up a little bit and then I brought it in the house and put it inside the basement and uh, Yesterday I noticed it's like okay. I got a bunch of these little fucking pimples all over the place Thanks a lot nature and uh, I guess it's kind of my fault for spraying it outside uh, you know on a windy day, but what I could do is I could sand that out and buff it and you won't even see it. But I'm using the first few coats of the uh, Spray Max as a sealer for everything. I'm going to seal it down because right now I could feel the artwork a little bit. Uh, mostly the eyeballs. <laughs> I could feel the eyes on this thing. A reason why is because I end up building up the eyes to make it dark enough uh, or white enough so you didn't see the black bleed through from the other side. What I should have done is I had this stuff and It's kind of expensive Self-adhesing tracing masking paper and it comes this came in a 12 by 24 uh, foot roll 12 inches by 24 feet and what this stuff does is it's basically a very wide masking tape. It comes in a roll, it doesn't come in sheets, and you cut off what you need as far as, uh, uh, you know, if you're doing any type of stenciling or something like that, like I did with this, put it, cover that area that you're uh, wanting to make a stencil on, and in my last video, you saw how I did the stenciling on this. And it's fairly easy, you just gotta be careful with your razor blade knife, like the masking paper I want to say masking tape, but it's paper, is very thin. 
uh, not thin enough to where paint will melt or bleed through it, but thin enough to where um, cutting it with a razor blade, if you're not careful, you can cut into whatever finish or into the paint or whatever that you have in a vehicle or whatever. Uh, and leave some deep marks in there and the bad thing about it is after peeling or doing your artwork you're still going to see those deep cuts into the finish of what you were trying to make a stencil for and what i should have done with this instead of doing it with the paint markers which these are great you could pick them up over at walmart they got them in different colors with different tip sizes um they work great for just doing you know some type of a quick artwork like this without having to pull out an airbrush what i should have done is i should have airbrushed this made my stencil and then airbrush the stencil uh, and then make another stencil for the eyes the eyeballs and so on and so on and then do this in layers uh, using the uh, you know using the airbrush I've got let's see here is this the airbrush stuff no nope, that's not the airbrush stuff Well, I've got the airbrush stuff somewhere around here. I can't, don't know where we put it. I've got the paints. We got the, what they call toxic custom paint uh, in pearls, and that's what I should did this was is a purple pearl or something to really make this thing kind of match like the headstock as far as the logo goes. The only thing that I ended up doing when I was doing the artwork is some of the white paint dripped onto the body and what I ended up doing is taking my finger and kind of wiping it off then I took some acetone and kind of went over to get the um, the white paint off of the black paint and what that I ended up doing is giving me a gray spot okay and I guess it just melted the um, the white paint into the clear because I didn't sand through the clear on this and it gave me a goofy spot over here. So what I ended up doing is, uh, you know, just leaving it. There's not much I can do without spraying the back. And if I spray the back, I'm going to have to do the whole back in black in order to, you know, correct that. So what I'm thinking about doing here is I've got my logo on the top of the back of the headstock. And I'm going to remove that. So I could either kind of put my logo, center it back here like I did with the, the spider. And kind of put it somewhat over that area so your eyes don't get drawn to it. You know, black is got different shades to it as well. Or I can cut the spider off over here and put the Epiphone logo over here. I could do that. Or now I don't know if this will work out if it's big enough to fill in the whole area. If I center this. But I have Jeff Lee's, the other Epiphone emblem that he made for me as well. So I have some options here instead of having to repaint it. Because I don't want to get rid of or do anything with the artwork on it. It's complete. I shaded it pretty damn good. Uh, the spider kind of looks like he's he's like either pissed off or, or has like a huh look on him. You know, something like that. And I don't want to change that. Um, the webbing is done and I didn't do it like neatly all right the spider has sharp lines and stuff is kind of done neatly the uh, webbing itself I want it to look like 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 trashy so that's why if you see like there, there's colors overlapping onto the black or you know it's, I wanted to have a little bit of a trashy look with some shading in it that's why I darkened it up in some spots the way I did I had some purple to kind of match everything else that goes with the, this guitar so it's going to be an Epiphone. I mean, there, there's nothing that I can do to change that. It's an Epiphone guitar. It's made by Epiphone. You know, it, it's made wherever, you know, it came from. That's where it came from. The only thing I did was change the appearance of it and all the electronics that is going into it to make it better. And I have to say, when I had this thing out in the sunlight and I saw the front of it, uh, holy shit. The lines popped, the, the colors popped, the blue, the purple, uh, the black popped on this thing in the sunlight. And it's like, man, I should have taken pictures. I should have, you know, today, well, today's a shitty day outside because the weather is fucking raining this morning. And the clouds really have not left the area. We got some sunlight, but it's like a hazy sunlight. You know, the... Uh, news is saying that because of some forest fire someplace else, we're getting to smoke and it's in the air. It's like, nope, we're in Chicago. That's pollution. It's 
so don't bullshit us so yeah that's what's going on with this thing it's working out really good the way i want it to i haven't gone through any of the artwork this area over here you don't even feel the artwork over here and like i said you just feel the eyeballs the eyeballs kind of stick up a little bit so i have to get a little bit more sanding done and get rid of all these little dots of dust and hopefully this weekend now our weather is supposed to be nice and sunny for now until i don't know when uh this was the only rain that we were going to get uh out here in illinois was this morning so hopefully if the weather permits and it's not very windy outside i can go ahead and finish this body and build this up where i want it just like i built the top up and start to do hopefully not even do a wet sanding and buffing on this thing. But if I have to, I have to. It's just, you know, it's the benefits of spraying outdoors. You know, I don't have a spray booth and the garage is occupied right now. So that's why I haven't done anything with the laser uh, printer that I have, that, that laser etching printer thing that I've got. It's because the garage has been occupied. So anyways, hope you guys are doing good. It's just a little bit of update on this thing. And yeah, so she's turning out pretty good. Just got to get her finished. And then get her up on eBay. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. And I will catch up with you all later.